welcome to the special CUBE presentation of Accelerating Business Transformation on VMC on AWS. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We have Ashish Daiwan, Director of Global Sales and Go-To-Market for VMware Cloud on AWS. This is a great showcase and should be a lot of fun. Ashish, thanks for coming on. Hi, John, thank you so much. So VMware Cloud on AWS has been well documented as a big success for VMware and AWS as customers move their workloads into the cloud, IT operations of VMware customers has signaling a lot of change. This is changing the landscape globally as on cloud migration and beyond. What's your take on this? Can you open this up with the most important story around VMC on AWS? Yes, John, uh, the most important thing for our customers today is the, how they can safely and swiftly move their ID infrastructure and applications to the cloud. Now, VMware Cloud and AWS is a service that allows all vSphere-based workloads to move to cloud safely, swiftly, and reliably. Banks can move their core, core banking platforms, insurance companies move their core insurance platforms, telcos move their OSS, BSS plat uh, platforms, uh, government organizations are moving their citizen engagement platforms using VMC on AWS because this is one platform that allows you to move it, move their VMware-based platforms very fast. Um, migrations can happen in a matter of days instead of months. Uh, extremely securely, it's a VMware managed service. It's very secure and highly reliable. It gets the, the reliability of the underlying AWS infrastructure along with it. So win-win uh, from our customer's perspective. You know, we reported on this big news in 2016 with Andy Jassy and Pat Gelsinger at the time. A lot of people said it was a bad deal. It turned out to be a great deal because not only could VMware customers actually have a cloud, migrate to the cloud, do it safely, which was their number one concern. They didn't want to have disruption to their operations, but also position themselves for what's beyond just shifting to the cloud. So I have to ask you, since you got the finger on the pulse here, what are we seeing in the market when it comes to migrating uh, and moder modernizing in the cloud? Because that's the next step. They go to the cloud, you guys have done that, doing it. Then they go, I got to modernize, which means kind of upgrading or refactoring. What's your take on that? Yeah, absolutely. Look. Uh the first step is to help our customers assess their infrastructure and licensing and their entire IT operations. Once we've done the assessment, we then create their migration plans. A lot of our customers are at that inflection point. They're, they're looking at their real estate, um, uh, data center real estate. They're looking at their contracts with co-location vendors. They really want to exit their data centers. Right, And VMware Cloud on AWS is a perfect solution for customers who want to exit their data centers. Migrate these applications onto the AWS platform using VMC on AWS, get rid of uh, additional real estate overheads, power overheads, uh, be uh, socially and environmentally conscious by doing that as well, right? So that's the migration story. But to your point, it doesn't end there, right? modernization is a critical aspect of the entire customer journey as, as well. Customers, once they've migrated their ID applications and infrastructure on cloud, get access to all the modernization services that AWS has. They can connect easily to our data lake services, to our AIML services, to our custom databases, right? They can decide which applications they want to keep and which applications they want to refactor. They want to take decisions on containerization, take decisions on serverless computing once they've come to the cloud. But the most important thing is to take that first step. You know, exit their data centers, come to AWS using VMC on AWS, and then the whole host of modernization options are available to them. Yeah, I got to say, we had this right on this, on this story because you just pointed out a big thing, which was first order of business is to make sure to leverage the on-prem investments that those customers made and then migrate to the cloud where they can maintain their applications, their data, their infrastructure operations that they're used to, and then be in position to start um, getting modern. So I have to ask you, how are you guys specific, or how is VMware Cloud on AWS addressing these needs of the customers? Because what happens next is something that needs to happen faster. And sometimes the skills might not be there because if they're running old school IT ops, now they got to come in and jump in, they're going to use a data cloud, they're going to want to use all kinds of machine learning and there's a lot of great goodness going on above the stack there. So as you move with the higher level services, you know, it's a no brainer obviously, but they're not 
it's not yesterday's higher level services in the cloud. So how, are, how is this being addressed? Absolutely. I think you hit upon a very important point and that is skills, right? Um, when our customers are operating, some of the most critical applications, I just mentioned core banking, core insurance, et cetera. There are most of the core applications that our customers have across industries, like even, even large scale ERP systems, they're actually sitting on VMware's vSphere platform, right? Now, when the customer wants to migrate these to cloud, one of the key bottlenecks they face is skill sets. They have the trained manpower for these core applications. But for these high level services, they may not, right? So the first order of business is to help them ease this migration pain as much as possible by not wanting them to, to upscale immediately. And VMware Cloud and AWS exactly does that. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to create new skill set for doing this, right? Their existing skill sets suffice. But at the same time, it gives them that, that leeway to build that skills roadmap for their team. And AWS is invested in that, right? Yeah. We want to help them build those skills in the high-level services, be it AML, be it, uh, be it IoT, uh, be it uh, data lake and analytics. We want to invest in them and we help our customers through that. So that ultimately, the ultimate goal of making them cloud data is, uh, is, is front and center. I want to get into some of the use cases and success stories, but I want to just reiterate, hit back your point on the skill thing, because if you look at what you guys have done at AWS, you've essentially, and Andy Jassy used to talk about this all the time when I would interview him, and now last year Adam was saying the same thing. You guys do all the heavy lifting. But if you're a VMware customer, user or operator, you're used to things. You don't have to be relearn to be a cloud architect now. You're already in the game. So this is like almost like a instant path to cloud skills for the VMware, there's hundreds of thousands of, of VMware uh, architects and operators that now instantly become cloud architects literally overnight. Can you respond to that? Do you agree with that? And then give an example. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, if you have skills on the VMware platform, uh, you know, migrating to AWS using VMware Cloud and AWS is absolutely possible. You don't have to really change the skills. The operations are exactly the same. Uh, the management systems are exactly the same. Uh, so you don't really have to change anything, but the advantage is that you get access to all the other AWS services. So you are instantly able to integrate with other AWS services and you become a cloud architect immediately, right? Um, you're able to solve some of the critical problems that your underlying IT uh, infrastructure has immediately using this. And I think that's a great uh, value proposition for our customers uh, to use this service. And just one more point, I want to just get into something that's really kind of inside baseball or nuanced. VMC or VMware Cloud on AWS means something. Could you take a minute to explain what on AWS means? Just because you're like hosting and using Amazon as a, as a work, workload, being on AWS means something specific in your world. Being VMC on AWS mean? Yes, uh, this is a great question by the way. Um, um, you know, on AWS, uh, means that you know VMware's vSphere platform is is a is an iconic uh, enterprise virtualization software. It's got you know a disproportionately high uh, market share across industries. So when we wanted to create a cloud product along with them, uh, obviously our um, aim was for them for the for this platform to have the goodness of the AWS underlying infrastructure. Right, and and therefore, when we created this uh, VMware Cloud uh, solution, it uh, it literally used the AWS platform underneath, right? And that's why it's called a VMs, VMware Cloud on AWS, using using the 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 wide um, portfolio of our regions across the world uh, and the strength of the underlying infrastructure, the reliability and uh, uh, and, and sustainability that it offers. Uh, and therefore this product uh, is called VMC on AWS. It's a distinction I think is worth noting and it does reflect 
engineering and some levels of integration that go well beyond just having a SaaS app and, and basic Absolutely. platform as a service or past services. So I just want to make sure that now SuperCloud, we'll talk about that a little bit in another interview, but I got to get one more question in before we get into the use cases and customer success stories is in, in most of the VM world, VMware world, um, in that IT world that used to, when you heard migration, people would go, oh my God, that's going to take months. And when I hear about um, um, moving stuff around and doing cloud native, the first reaction people might have is complexity. So two questions for you before we move on to the next uh, talk track. Complexity, how are you addressing the complexity issue? And how long do these migrations take? Uh, is it easy? Is it hard? I mean, you know, the, the knee jerk reaction is month. They're, they're used to that. If they're dealing with Oracle or other old school vendors, like they're like the old guard would be like, takes a year to move stuff around. So can you comment on complexity and speed? Yeah, so the first first thing is complexity. And you know, what makes uh, what makes anything complex is if you're, if you're required to acquire new skill sets, or you've got to, uh, if you're required to manage something differently. And as far as VMware Cloud and AWS, on both these aspects, you don't have to do anything, right? You don't have to acquire new skill sets. Your existing ID operation skill sets on, on VMware's platforms are absolutely fine. And you don't have to manage it any differently. Like uh, uh, Dan, what are you managing your, your uh, ID infrastructure today? So on both these aspects, it's exactly the same. And therefore, it is absolutely not complex um, uh, uh, as far as as far as uh, as far as VMware Cloud and AWS is concerned. And the other thing is speed. Now, this is where the huge differentiation is. You would have seen that uh, you know large banks and large telcos have now moved their workloads, uh, you know, literally in days instead of months, because um, uh, because of VMware Cloud and AWS. A lot of time, customers come to us with specific deadlines because they want to exit their data centers on a particular date. And what happens? VMware Cloud and AWS is called upon to do that migration, right? So speed is absolutely critical. The reason is also exactly the same because you're using the exactly the same platform, the same management systems, people are available to you, you're able to migrate quickly, yeah. right? I would just reference uh, recently we got uh, an award from, um, President Zelensky of Ukraine for uh, you know migrating their entire ID uh, digital infrastructure um, uh, and and that that happened because uh, they were using VMware Cloud and AWS and it happened very swiftly. That's a great example. I mean, that's one political, but the economic advantage of getting out of the data center could be national security. You mentioned Ukraine. I mean, obviously that's we see bombing and death over there. So clearly that's a critical crown jewel for their running their operations, which is, you know, you know world mission critical. So um, great stuff. I love the speed thing. I think that's a huge one. Let's get into some of the use cases. One of them is the first one I wanted to talk about was we just hit on data, data center migration. Um, it could be financial reasons on a downturn or our, our market growth. People can make money by shifting to the cloud, either saving money or making money. You win on both sides. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a recession proof, if you will, cloud is. So um, use case for number one, data center migration. Take us through what that looks like. Give an example of a success. Uh, take us through a, a day in the life of a data center migration in, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I can give you an example of of a, of a large bank um, who uh, decided to migrate. Um, um, uh, you know, their uh, all their data centers uh, outside their existing uh, infrastructure, um, and th they had they had a set timeline, right? Uh, they had a set timeline to migrate the. the uh, 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 they were coming up on a renewal, and they wanted to make sure that this set timeline is met. Um, we did a, a complete assessment of their infrastructure. We did a complete assessment of their IT applications. Uh, more than 80% of their IT applications from the underlying v, uh, vSphere platform. Uh, and we, we thought that the right solution for them in the timeline that they wanted, right, is VMware Cloud and AWS. And obviously it was a large bank uh, it uh, wanted to do it safely and securely. Uh, it wanted to have uh, it completely managed, and therefore VMware Cloud and AWS, uh, you know, ticked all the boxes as far as that is concerned. I'll be happy to report that uh, the large bank has moved most of their applications 
on AWS, uh, exiting three of their data centers, and they'll be exiting 12 more very soon. So that's a great example of, uh, of, the, of the large bank exiting data centers. There's another uh, corollary to that. Not only did they manage to um, manage to exit their data centers and, of course, uh, use be more agile, but they also met their sustainability goals. Their board of directors had given them goals to be carbon neutral by 2025. They found out that 35% of all their carbon foot footprint was in their data centers. And if they move their, uh, uh, their ID infrastructure to cloud, they would severely reduce the uh, the carbon footprint, which is 35% down to 17 or 18%. Right, and that met their uh, their 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 sustainability targets and their commitment to the carb to being carbon neutral as well. And that they and they shift that to you guys. Would you guys take that burden, the heavy lifting there? And you guys have a sustainability story, uh, which is a whole nother showcase in and of itself. We can exactly, and, and because of the scale of our of our operations, we are able to we are able to work on that um, uh, uh, really well as well. All right, so I love the data migration. I think that's got real proof points. You got, I can save money. I can I can then move and position my applications into the cloud for that reason and other reasons. There's a lot of other reasons to do that. But now mm -hmm. listen to what you mentioned earlier was, okay, data migration, clearly a use case. Uh, and you laid out some successes. I'm sure there's a zillion others, but then the next step comes. Now you got cloud architects becoming minted every, and you got managed services and higher level services. What happens next? Can you give us an example of the use case of the modernization around the next gen workloads, next gen applications? We're starting to see, you know, things like data clouds, not data warehouses, we're not going to data clouds. There's going to be all kinds of clouds. These next gen apps are pure digital transformation in action. Take us through a use case of the, how you guys make that happen with a success story. Yes, uh, absolutely. And this is um, this is an amazing success story. And the customer here is uh, S&P uh, Global Ratings. As you know, S&P Global Ratings is uh, is the world leader as far as uh, global ratings, global credit ratings is concerned. And for them, you know, the last couple of years have been tough as far as hardware procurement is concerned, right? Uh, the pandemic has really upended the, the supply chain uh, and it was taking a lot of time to procure hardware, you know, configure it in time, uh, make sure that that's reliable, and then, you know, distribute it in uh, the wide uh, um, variety of, uh, of, uh, of uh, offices and locations that they have. And uh, they came to us, uh, we, we did again a, 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 la a fairly large comprehensive assessment of their ID infrastructure and their licensing contracts. And we also found out that VMware Cloud and AWS is uh, the right solution for them. So we worked there, migrated all uh, their applications. And as soon as we migrated all their applications, they got they get access to uh, you know, our high level services, uh, be it our analytics services, our machine learning services, services, um, our, um, our, our, our uh, artificial intelligence services that have been critical for them uh, for their growth. And, and that really is helping them, you know, get towards their next level of modern applications, right? Uh, now, obviously, uh, going forward, uh, they, will have, uh, they will have the choice to, you know, really think about which applications they want to, you know, refactor or which applications they want to uh, go ahead with. Uh, that is really a choice in front of them. And, but, you know, the VMware Cloud and AWS really gave them the opportunity to first migrate and then you know move towards modernization with speed. You know, the speed of a startup is always the kind of Silicon Valley story where you you know people can make massive changes in 18 months, whether it's a pivot or a new product. You see that in startup world. Now in the enterprise, you can see the same thing. I noticed behind you on your whiteboard, you got a slogan that says, "Are you thinking big?" Um, I know Amazon likes to think big, but also you work back from the customers. And, and I think this modern application thing is a big deal because I think the mindset has always been constrained because back before they moved to the cloud, most IT and, and, and on-premise data center shops, it's slow. You got to get the hardware, you got to configure it, you got to, you got to stand it up, make sure all the software is validated on it and loading a database and loading OSs. I mean, yeah, it got easier and with scripting and whatnot. But when you move to the cloud, you have more scale, which means more speed, which means it opens up their capability to think differently and build product. What are you seeing there? Can you share your opinion on 
that epiphany of, wow, things are going fast. I got more time to actually think about maybe doing a cloud native app or transforming this or that. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Can you share your opinion? Well, ultimately we, we want our customers to utilize you know, most of our modern services, you know, applications should be microservices based. Uh, when desired, they should use serverless um, serverless technology. Um, they should not have monolithic, uh, you know, relational database contracts. They should use uh, custom uh, databases. Uh, they should use containers when needed, right? So ultimately we want our customers to use these modern uh, technologies to make sure that their IT infrastructure, their licensing, their uh, their entire um, uh, IT spend is completely native uh, to cloud technologies. They work with the speed of a startup, but it's important for them to 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 uh, get to the first step, right? So that's why we create this journey for our customers, where you help them migrate, give them time to build the skills. They'll help them modernize, take up partners along with them, uh, um, along with us to to make sure that they can address the need for our uh, customers uh, that's that's what our customers need today and that's what we're working backwards from yeah and I think that opens up some big ideas I'll just say that uh, you know we're joking I was joking the other night with someone here in, in Palo Alto around serverless and I said yeah soon you're going to hear words like architectureless and uh, that's a criticism on one hand but you might say hey you know if you don't really need an architecture, you know, storage lists. I mean, at the end of the day, infrastructure as code means developers can do all the IT in the coding cycles and then make the operations cloud-based. I think this is kind of where I see the dots connecting. Final thought here, uh, take us through what you're thinking around how this new world is evolving. I mean, architecture is kind of a joke, but the point is, you know, you have to some sort of architecture, but you don't have to overthink it. Totally. Now, that's a great thought, by the way. I know it's a joke, but it's a great thought because at the end of the day, you know, what do your customers really want? They want outcomes, right? Why did serverless technology come? It was because there was an outcome that they needed. They didn't want to get stuck with, uh, you know, the 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 real estate of of a, of a server. They wanted to use compute uh, when they needed to, right? Uh, similarly, you, what you're talking about is, you know, outcome based. Uh, um, you know, uh, desire of our customers, and 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 that's exactly where the world is going to, right? Uh, cloud really enforces that, right? We are actually, you know, working backwards from a customer's outcome and using our area, the breadth and depth of our services, to to deliver those outcomes, right? Um, and and most of our services are in that path, right? When we use VMware Cloud and AWS, the outcome is. A to migrate, then to modernize, but doesn't stop there. Use our native services, you know, get the business outcomes using this. So I think that's uh, that's exactly what we're going through. I should you the director of global sales and go to market for VMware Cloud on AWS. I want to thank you for coming on, but I'll give you the final minute. Give a plug, explain what is the VMware Cloud on AWS? Why is it great? Why should people um, engage with you and, and the team? And what ultimately is this path look like for them going forward? Yeah, at the end of the day, we want our customers to have the best uh, uh, path to the cloud, right? The, the best path to the cloud is making sure that they migrate safely, reliably, and securely, uh, as well as with speed, right? And then, you know, use that cloud platform to, to utilize AWS's native services uh, to make sure that they modernize their IT infrastructure and applications, right? We want uh, ultimately that our customers, customers, customer, get the best out of, uh, you know, utilizing that, that whole application experience is enhanced tremendously by using our services. And I think that's that's exactly what we're working towards. VMware Cloud and AWS is, is helping our customers in that journey uh, towards migrating, modernizing, whether they want to exit a data center or whether they want to modernize their applications. It's an essential first step that we want to help our customers with. Ashish Tawan, Director of Global Sales and Go to Market with VMware Cloud on AWS. He's with AWS sharing his thoughts on accelerating business transformation on AWS. This is a showcase. We're talking about the future path. We're talking about use cases with success stories from customers. Ashish, thank you for spending time today on this showcase. Thank you, John, I appreciate it. Okay, this is theCUBE special coverage, special presentation of the AWS showcase. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.